goodbye, Daddy. I'm sorry. You're a fool, Pat. Let's not fight again, Dad, please. Either you're stupid or you're blind or you're both. Can't you see what you're giving up? I'll write to you as soon as I get a chance. Don't bother. Okay, whatever you say. Goodbye, Daddy. You're going to die out there. Do you hear me? You're going to die. Your life will add up to one big fat zero. All right, go ahead, go out there and suffer and sweat and get dirty. Then lie down someplace and die, you little fool. Lie down and die. of spiritual conflict in the 20th century. Insight. Some of us go to sleep with our eyes open. We exist, but we never fully come alive. What's the difference? Plenty. To be fully alive means taking rest. It means getting involved. It means loving so much that the pains and problems of other people become our own. Existing means playing it safe, turning off, closing up, isolating ourselves from life, preventing ourselves from getting involved with anyone. Non-involvement is like a tomb. It may seem quiet and comfortable and safe, but it's really very confining, and only a dead man can stand it for long. You can run away from life, but you can't escape it. And if you try, you'll miss half the fun. That's fine, Dawes. As soon as you get rid of that trash, you're free to go. You can have the next two days off. Well, excuse me, sir, but my days off are usually Monday and Tuesday. I've rearranged the schedule, Dawes. You can have the next two days off. Any questions? Oh, no, sir. Sir, all taken care of. Must have been quite a party you had last night. I mean, I trust everyone enjoyed themselves. How long have you been on this job, Martin? About three months, sir. The last man to hold your job is with me for ten years, and I never once had to remind him about keeping his place. Yes, sir. I was only... You are hired to supervise the maintenance of this house and all the land around it. Do your job properly, Martin, and see that the rest of the servants do theirs, period. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Excuse me. left of it is that straight orange juice I threw in a healthy touch of vodka it does marvelous things for my appetite <laughs> well, she's gone isn't she what Pat of course yes she's gone it was quite a shock to me oh come off it dad 
Pat is not only my big sister, but she's also a big girl. Now, you didn't really expect her to live the rest of her life out here in the middle of nowhere, now, did you? No, not the rest of her life. Then when did you plan on setting her free? As a matter of fact, when do you plan to set the rest of us free? I'm your father, Sally, and I'm their father, so why not leave it in my hands? Because we're not kids anymore, that's why. Pat's 23, I'm 20, Chris is 17, and Johnny's going on 15. Oh, we've debated all this a hundred times before. What's so wonderful and marvelous and impelling about this business of being free? Free to do what? Look, all I know is that there's a big world out there. And it's full of people, and it's full of things. And I guess we want to be part of it because we're people, too. Is that crazy? You say you want to be part of it. Part of what? Part of war, disease, filth, crime, stupidity? Well, that's the world, Daddy, dear. And sooner or later, we've got to meet it and live in it. Good and bad. No, child, you're wrong. We do not have to. Why do you suppose I spent the better part of a million dollars in buying this land, building this house, laying out roads, creating a whole plant independent of anything? Well, I can answer that one. Just so we can have our own private movie house, our own private riding trail, own private swimming pool, and our very own private tennis courts where you were supposed to meet me 10 minutes ago. Oh, Chris, honey, I'm sorry. I'm afraid you'll have to take a rain check on that. Why? Well, you see, I'm expecting a visitor, and uh, he'll be here any moment now. Why don't you kids run on down to the court, huh? Come on, sister. I think this is what's called the bum's rush. Oh, by the way, what's Johnny up to? Uh, why, in his room, as usual. You have noticed that about Johnny, haven't you, Dad? What? Well, remember how at first he always used to talk about getting away from here for a vacation? faraway places and all that. And then he didn't seem to talk about it anymore. He was happy enough just to play down by the lake or up on the hill near the stables. And then he got used to staying in the house all day long. He didn't even want to go outdoors. And now he just likes to stay in his room, his one little old room. He even likes to have his meals in there. Kind of like a baby chip trying to crawl back into its shell. Interesting, Miss Pop. Au revoir, Daddy dear. Excuse me, sir. The guard at the main gate just called. He says there's a man who wants to see you. He claims he's your brother. He is. Have him send up right away, will you? Yes, sir. I couldn't have believed it in all my born days. No, sir, not in my wildest dreams. You've got a Lollapalooza here. A first-rate, genuine Lollapalooza. Well, thank you, Chips. We're proud of it. It's very comfortable, and it's also very safe, as you may have noticed. Oh, yes, I did. I saw all those guards down there. Hey, you look fine, Brother Carl. Uh, how long has it been? About 15 years since the last time? Oh, must be that at least. And uh, how are things with you, Chips? Oh, couldn't be better. Plenty to eat, a place to sleep, and there's always a job to be done, Carl. You, uh, you're still not married? Oh, no, free as a bird. Hey, that isn't why you asked me up here, is it? Chips, I want to know about Pat. Oh, what about her? Well, she packed up last night and went straight to the city, and I imagine she went straight to you. As a matter of fact, she did. Yeah, where is she? Uh, she's all right. Where now. is she? Well, I can't tell you that. I promised I wouldn't. But, uh, Chip, she's my daughter. It's important to me. Well, it's important to her, too. I right? want to talk to her. Well, she doesn't want to talk to you right now. She wants no part of you at all. Uh, <laughs> then, Chip, you talk to her, will you? Tell her to come on home. Tell her she belongs here. I'm not sure she does. Well, I am sure, Chip. She's my daughter. Yeah, well, she's uh, a grown woman first. She's your daughter second. Well, anyway, Chips, you talk to her. Convince her. I'll make it worth your while. You'll what? How much? You name it. Oh, you're a fool, Carl. Well, meaning, but you are a stupid fool. Those are fine words coming from a common bum. Because that's what you add up to, Chips. No ambition, no steady job, no family, no... Ah, ah, ah. A family I have. It's enormous. 
It's the whole human race. Oh, back on your soapbox again. Right now, I'm father and friend to a whole city. But if the entire country or the world wanted me to adopt them, I'd do so gladly. <laughs> <laughs> the common herd, huh? And just exactly what do you do for your common herd? Well, I don't do much, but I keep on trying. Well, you feed them, house them, put clothes on their backs. It's not my bread alone, brother. Their, far, their needs are deeper, far more exacting. As a matter of fact, I can't always help them, but I can try. I, uh, I befriend drunks. Uh, <laughs> and I uh, advise newsboys and streetwalkers. And uh, on occasion, I even hear confessions of members of the cloth. I, uh, I counsel them. I, uh, a lot of them need it. And uh, I instruct judges and magistrates on how to temper justice with mercy. And uh, then I, uh, I advise ice cream peddlers in matters of ethics and business and industry. So you say I have, uh, I have a lot on my hands being father of the world. Uh, I'm not the best father, but uh, I'm a father nonetheless. Chips, you better check in at the county hospital. You're more insane than ever. Uh, you think so? You really think so? And if you do, what about all this? Oh, what? All this? What about your wife and children? For your information, my wife died four years ago. Yes. But how did it happen? Stomach trouble, cancer, why should you care? Uh, she drank herself to death, is that what you mean? No. Well, Pat told me uh, Mother drank herself to death because she was just bored here. Yeah. And I can see how a thing like that would happen. My wife was a sick woman. She was mentally disturbed. Well, who wouldn't be living up here on the top of a mountain like a goat, this island in the clouds? <laughs> I've got better than 15,000 acres up here. That adds up to quite an island, I'd say. Oh, I, I'd say so, too. You have all the trees and soil and streams and lakes anyone would want. But where did the world disappear to? What happened to the people? I don't give a damn about the people. That ought to be clear to you by now. That's quite clear. And I'm sorry if I offended you. I pity you, Carl. You're in anguish. You've been in anguish for years. You're eaten up by your own fear. You're so frightened of life, you're scared to death to live it. Oh, Chips, my ears are getting tired. Why, why don't you go get yourself a drink? Oh, oh, much obliged. I didn't think you'd ever get around to asking me that. <laughs> uh, uh, where are the kids hiding out? They're around someplace. They'll drop in after a while. Carl, tell me. How long has it been since you uh, moved here? Oh, 14, 15 years. Incredible. For 15 years, your kids have been living in this plush, fur-lined cocoon, completely protected. Uh, have they ever seen a small town or a big city? Of course they have. We take trips from time to time. When was the last time? You're overplaying your role, brother. Don't question me. I raise my children the way I want them raised. But you don't raise them. You grow them like so many delicate seedlings in a well-managed hothouse. You're afraid to plant them outside for fear they won't get through the first winter. You know, Chips, I don't much like the sight of you, and your inane babbling I like even less. I think I've earned myself a drink. Indeed you have. And if I, uh, if I offended you, I apologize, Carl. Well, that's fair enough, and I accept. Now all I want is to get my daughter back home, and to do that I need your help. Of course, why else would you invite me up here? You could go to your grave without ever seeing this old bum again. But I'm here, and you need me, and I'll gladly help. But tell me one thing. What was it that finally made you decide to move up here, to do this thing? Was it the time that you were having the holy jitters about the atomic bomb? Or was it the Korean War? Or was it that uh, terrible crime wave? Or was it the race riots? Maybe it was... I'll tell you what it was. It was one of them and it was all of them. And it's all of them right now, today, because they're still hanging over our heads. War, violence, rape, the worst kind of crimes. 
I had the money and the opportunity to take my family away from it, and I did. My kids are well cared for here, and they're safe. There's a, a high wall around the entire estate, and it's guarded 24 hours a day. It's as impressive as the Great Wars of China, Carl. Have you any conception of the money I spend on my kids, of the advantages I give them? Why, I built classrooms out back. I bring the finest tutors here to educate them. Now, you weigh what I've given them against what supposedly I've denied them, and you tell me I'm wrong. Uh, I won't, Carl. You'll have to tell yourself that sooner or later. Excuse me, Mr. Guthrie. Uh, there's an overseas phone call for you, sir, your London office. Oh, yes. Excuse me a moment, William Chips. Mm, certainly. Xanadu did Kubla Khan a stately pleasure dome decree, where Alf the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man down to the sunless sea. So twice five miles of fertile ground with walls and towers were girdled round. It was a miracle of rare device, a sunny pleasure dome with caves of ice. <laughs> oh, uh, pardon me. Uh, why should I pardon you? Have you done something? Well, I disturbed you, I think. I, I was just looking for my father. Sir, who are you? It's a very profound question, my friend. People have been asking themselves that for centuries. Who am I? Who am I? Who are you? <laughs> well, I'll hazard a guess. If your name happens to be John, mine might happen to be Chips, Uncle Chips. Sure, Uncle Chips. I've heard my sisters talk about you. I'm happy to make your acquaintance, John. Uh, excuse me, but when I came in, you were talking to yourself? Uh, of course I was. I'm usually talking to myself. Yeah, that is, if I'm not talking to all of mankind. Communicating, John, communicating. Sharing, getting involved with your next door neighbor. That's the key to the happy life. <laughs> Tell me, you like it here? Huh? I mean, do you like living here with your dad and your sisters? Sure, it's okay. Just okay? Well, yeah. I mean, I have my own radio and television in my room. I like to read. I get all the books I want. Yeah. It's pretty neat here. But wouldn't you like to get out and see some other places and meet some other people? Oh, I used to think about it sometimes. I don't anymore. I mean, I have my room. From my window, I can see just about everything there is to see. Can you? Can you really, John? Four forty-five. Right on schedule, correct? Check. Check. And we move to step two. The guards are out of the way. Service have been taken care of. Now, as soon as Guthrie finishes his overseas phone call, you cut the telephone lines. All of them. Check. What about the kids? Yeah, the kids. The boys in the house. Two girls on the tennis court. Now, after you cut the lines, you pick up the girls, bring them to the house. Understood? Right. Well, hi there. I trust you two have properly introduced yourselves. We have with ruffles and flourishes. Yeah, we've been talking about things and places all over. He's a great boy, Carl. Bright, 
For once in my life, I really envy you. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, Sally, Chris, look who's here. It's Uncle Chip. So, hello. You've grown up to be beautiful, both of you. How about a big hug for the best uncle you ever had? What's the matter with you two, anyway? What's Uncle going Chip. on here? Okay. I'll just take it nice and easy, and nobody will get hurt. Who are you? How did you get, get over that couch? All of you. What's the name of this game? Armed robbery? Or did you drop your compass in the woods and get lost here in the wilderness? You just take a nice and easy chump, and everything will work out fine. Yeah? For whom? Oh. <laughs> now, do you get the message? Look, Mr. Boy, see all this. If you want to rob us, take what you want, but don't let him suffer through it. Let me take him to his room. The boy stays right here. Yeah, but why? If you want to rob, go ahead and rob, but this violence is senseless. Sit down and shut up. Don't anyone try anything cute. What do you think of this, kids? Isn't it exciting? These, these... These fellas are real live burglars. Val, cast your eyes over this scene. Get it in your head, absorb it, and then start asking yourself some questions. I told you once, funny boy, we're not playing games. Stop your babbling shit, you'll just get us all in trouble. Carl, don't you see the joke? Here you are enthroned in your impregnable castle for 15 years, secure against everything. You hung out your own iron curtain with iron guards at the, at the borders. For what? For what? Only to have these cheap thieves walk in here as if it was Grand Central Station. Look, will you take what you want and get out? How long are you going to keep us here? Not for very long, Mr. Guthrie, sir. Not for very long. Not. At your service, so to speak. Uh, will somebody tell me the score? I've lost my scorecard. It's really quite simple. My colleagues are on the run, and so am I now, because of a rather large sum of cash from one of your more reputable banks. What? No need to stew, Mr. Guthrie. We'll be gone before morning. As soon as our private plane arrives, we'll take off from your own private landing field. Hey, how about that? What imagination, what daring. This is like a movie, marvelous. This operation means quite a bit to us. So if anybody gets in our way, they'll be taken care of. You understand that, don't you? Every Martin. word. I, I won't believe you're in this, Martin. Why? Because you accepted my credentials? Because you believed in all those glowing recommendations? <sighs> they were fakes? Very excellent fakes. So you gave me the job, my colleagues did their job, and tomorrow, fate's willing, we'll be on our way south across the border and enjoy the fruits of our labors. What about the servants? What happened to the guards? Don't worry, miss. Guards have been recently replaced. The servants are enjoying a full weekend of leisure on the house. Hey, Martin, tell me, why did you pick this place for our hideout? It's self-explanatory, isn't it? It's very remote, hardly accessible. It's own private landing field right outside the front door. Marvelous. I knew this place was good for something, Carl. Now, Guthrie, if you'll come with me to the landing field, uh, it seems as though a fuse is blown. Landing lights won't go on. I'm sure you can help us. Whatever you say. Tom, you and Bobby take care of the rest of the flock. We won't be long. Check. OK. Now, everybody take it nice and easy, and we'll get along fine. It's all right, Johnny. Don't worry. <laughs> Would you just mind if I uh, fix myself a small libation? A drink. Uh, it's just something to waste the time. Huh? Now, go ahead, funny boy. Maybe it'll help keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Thank you. Look, can't you get that kid to shut up? He's getting on my nerves. Well, why don't you let me take him up to his room? He'll feel better there. I couldn't care less how he feels. Just get him to shut up. Please, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you got any sense? No, you scared you. Let me for this kid, you blow. Power. Make yourself scarce. Get out of here. Get out. Step down, Carl. Chris. Sally, where are you? They're all right. <laughs> 
Yes, a few chips. You hired a most unfaithful servant. But he's a pretty good marksman. Oh, dear. Thank God you're all right. What about Johnny? Oh, he's scared to death, but he's okay. Chip, can I get you something? A, a drink, maybe? I've had my limit for today. Remember this for me, baby. Nothing can ever soil you. People can't make you dirty. That's something only you can do for yourself. Carl. I'm right here, Chips. I hope you grasp the significance of this. Get out of here. Go back to the world and enjoy it. Revel in it. Be glad of it. Yeah, take it easy, Chips. Besides. Yes? It's much safer in the city. There's a crime wave around here that's positively out of hand. Uh. Isolation or involvement? To withdraw from life or to plunge into it boldly? This is a choice we all have to make. I can't make the decision for you but I can tell you how it is with me. I don't find life easy. Risk, disappointment, responsibility, loneliness and fear, they're all part of it. But I do find life exciting. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. I also find other people exciting. I never seem to get enough of them. I believe in giving myself to life fully. And I also believe in allowing life to give itself to me. That means opening up turning on and loving to capacity. What life have you if not life together? T.S. Eliot asked. And he answered his own question. There is no life not lived in community and no community not lived in praise of God. I cannot say yes to God without also saying yes to all other men. I cannot say no to life without also saying no to God for God is life, the fullness of life. I intend to share that life of his as fully as I can. Care to join me? Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church.